Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and the topic of today's video is what is it like to be born as an INFJ man compared to an INFJ woman? What is it like to be born as an ISTJ man compared to an ISTJ lady? Now I believe that uh, we all have some idea of or conception of what male and feminine is. And it's important to note that these views and my views on what male and feminine is might not be your views and that we might see things differently. Uh, we are all trying to code and to put the world in terms of masculine and feminine to some extent. We've all been programmed to think like that. When we go into a store we see things and products that scream male and some that scream woman. And we as men, I think myself personally as a man, I tend to avoid sections that are made for women. And uh, all of this is happening all the time. We're doing it all the time, sometimes without re uh, realizing it. We have this view of this unmasked, pure version of a woman and this unmasked, pure version of a man. And as a person who's grown up in a household uh, where people don't know of the MBTI, I've heard all these stereotypes about how men are compared to how women are. And as I heard them, I realized that women often tend to see men as ISTJs by default. And women tend to see themselves as ENFPs by default. As I heard how they described men, I would note this, that they described men as uncommunicative, as close-minded, as only hearing their own voice as being self-absorbed or narcissistic, of only thinking of themselves. As I heard them describe men, I heard, would notice that they would describe men as sensing, as too, only seeing what, what they could touch and feel with their hands, as being too concrete, as being loud, as being uh, wanting all eyes on them, as wanting to be seen and heard, as wanting to take place in the physical reality, as taking space, uh, widening their legs and their arms and being a person uh, that asserts themselves in the physical rather than the imaginative, dreamy world of intuition. As I heard them describe men, I would notice that they kept thinking men were typically more thinking. They would describe men as logical, as science and disciplinary in their thinking, as applying systems and formulas and structure and rules to think rather than to think on their gut and based on emotions and qualities and nuances. And I would note this how they describe men as linear and only able to do one task at a time and not being able to consider different viewpoints and being too focused and narrow-minded in a sense. Just as people would describe Yajirs in the Myers-Briggs type universe. And taking all this in mind, I was kind of blown, my mind was kind of blown up by this realization. We believe men to be ISTJs and women to be ENFPs. And that automatically suggests something. That suggests that you are the archetypal man if you are born an ISTJ. You are the archetypal female if you are born an ENFP. And while this view might change in the future and perhaps people will get a different view of masculinity and femininity in the future, this is at least true in my culture right now. Now, if you're born as an ISTJ woman, I think that means a lot of trouble for you because I think when you come into a room, I think people will assume that you are an ENFP from the moment they first see you. And if you are an uh, uh, ENFP male, people will assume that you are an ISTJ from the moment you enter a room. And then from that moment, you will have to disprove their view of you. You will have to disprove all the associations and things that they will automatically think of you. And you will have to find a way to manage those views of yourself and to try not to be too affected and uh, caught up in those webs. Because I think it's easy to get caught up in these webs. I think it's easy for... And this has to do with how we view femininity and how we do view masculinity. When Carl Jung described the anima and the animus, what he would say was that we had this idea of the lowest version of femininity and masculinity, and this view of the highest version of masculinity and femininity. And the lowest view of femininity is, of course, helplessness, fragility, weakness, and an inability to stand up for oneself. 
And the lowest view of masculinity is a person that is brutish, primitive, and unrefined. A person that doesn't think of how they dress, that doesn't, uh, isn't able to communicate properly, that is aggressive and uh, sometimes dangerous to other people. And uh, this means, I think, that often women that are going to use thinking and sensing and introversion and judging are going to be seen as, to some extent, brutish and primitive unrefined. I can repeatedly hear female leaders, female ISTJs and INTJs like Angela Merkel and others described in this way as ugly, as unattractive, as unappealing, as unrefined, as (laughs) primitive to some extent. And it's because I think it's easier to toss the label of the lowest version of masculinity towards these women. And it's easier to give and to permit men to enter into a kind of higher regard of masculinity. Just as it is easier for women to enter into a higher version of femininity than it is for men. This means an ENFP male who enters into uh, femininity and tries to have and possess these extroverted intuitive feeling and perceiving traits. This ENFP will sometimes be dismissed for this. They will be dismissed as weak and as too emotional and as, to some extent, uh, fragile or a failed masculinity. Or rather, to some extent, a failed femininity. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to be an ENFP woman. That's not what I'm saying at all. To it is, it can be really difficult for an ENFP woman if... Her judgment is shrugged off as too emotional, if her ideas are dismissed as crazy, if her thoughts and her whims are shrugged off as just a dream or just uh, in their heads when it's not. And I do think we need to take ENFP women far more seriously than we do. And even though an ENFP male finds flow from being extroverted, from being intuitive, from being feeling and from being perceiving, Men who are ENFPs are not going to be permitted to use these functions as often as others, as women would be. And uh, men who use these functions are still, to some extent, perhaps going to be regarded as ISTJs in their use of these functions. We will excuse their extroversion and see it as introverted. We will excuse their intuition and think it is sensing. So we will think an ENFP male who is using intuition is actually using sensing and they're actually being concrete and they're actually being clear and they're actually being direct when they're not. We'll think that the ENFP male is using logic and reason when they're being emotional. We will think that the ENFP male is being straightforward and being focused and goal-oriented when they're actually being perceiving. And sometimes when this uh, misconception becomes real, I think we become a little angry at the man because we feel tricked to some extent. We become angry at the ENFP male and we start tossing accusations at them and we start feeling deceived and to some extent uh, betrayed by them. And that's also something that uh, women are going to experience. Uh, Men who come searching for the ISTJ woman and uh, believing them to be this nurturing person, believing them to be this uh, imaginative, dreamy, fickle, far out, floating person um, are going to be angry at the ISTJ woman at some extent for not taking care of them, for not being emotionally nurturing, for not being supportive enough to some extent. And this is a typical dilemma that will appear in relationships. I think this dilemma becomes increasingly clear like after the puppy love stage has ended, after you move towards a more mature stage in your relationship often I think a lot of conflicts start to emerge because your idealized version of this femininity uh, that you thought this woman possessed turns out not to exist. And this idea of this man as so strong and stylish and handsome and classy disappears. And you start seeing the real version of them away from these stereotypes. 
this is also an emotional point of reassurance, really, because you realize that uh, just after a while, people will have to see and admit the real you. It might take it some time before they get to that point where they actually acknowledge you as a person of strength and of sensory and thinking and introversion and judging. But it will happen. If you get to know a person and if you start interacting with them and working with them, at some point they're going to have to go, okay, fine, you can be that way. Fine, I accept that you are that way. Fine, you can have that power and you can have that position in the company and you can be that person. But uh, when you meet a new person, that will always be a problem in the beginning, in the early phase. But I do think there is a crash. If you idealize too much, if you have this regard too high, you're going to be prone to disappointment, anger, and the feeling of being betrayed. And I think because of this, uh, ISTJ women are going to mask their ISTJ traits to some extent. I note this that ISTJ women will to some extent uh, try to cover up their tracks. Whenever they use introversion, sensing, thinking and judging, they will always add some extroversion, some intuition, some feeling and some perceiving to it. Using thinking and judging and doing something and making a decision and asserting yourself and saying, is was that okay? I didn't hurt you when I did that, right? And I see this in uh, all kind of thinking types. I see them going with thinking front and then adding some feeling just in case. The ENTP woman is more likely than the ENTP man to go, sorry, did I say something rude? Did I hurt you? They will say something rude <laughs> because that's a good thing about them. That's, uh, they're, they're honest and they're uh, going to speak their mind. But they're always going to have that worry and that need to cover up their tracks with feeling to some extent. Because they believe this is how they have to be. And so I see ENTP women saying, should I try to be less smart for my man? Should I try to cover up so that my man will think he is uh, strong and that he is capable and that he is the uh, driver and the... Uh, depend uh, dependable person in the relationship even when it's not uh, and no of course you shouldn't you should be yourself in a relationship and you should find someone that respects you for who you are and loves you for who you are but of course that's easier said than done so I see uh, thinking women going into and masking and faking this helplessness and going oh I can't do that when they actually can do it and they know they can do it and they're only doing it as a favor to you because they think in giving you the chance to come in and sweep in as a savior and rescuer you will come to desire them more you will come to be more interested in them you will come to like them more and that's a part of the dating game where men are training themselves and reading manuals and how to be a man and how to be assertive and confident and aggressive and to go for what you want. Women are reading manuals and telling each other's tips and advice for how to get a man to be interested in you by acting feminine and acting weak and helpless and dropping your napkin. Okay, people don't do that anymore, but still. There is this fake helplessness that people put up because they want to encourage men to be men. And the thing is, I want to say, people, some people love that, and that's okay. If you want to be helpless, or if you want to act helpless, and if you like that, act. That's okay. Carl Jung said, you don't have to change yourself when learning about the anima and animus, and to balance and to individualize yourself. You don't need to stop being a woman as a woman. You don't need to stop being a man as a man. If you are that way, that's completely fine, according to Jung. It all has to do with how you view and accept the masculinity or femininity in yourself. If there are emotions that you feel as a man that you want to express that you're repressing, you need to become more accepting of that. If you are a woman that has a desire for power and for taking charge and taking the lead and being the person that initiates relationships, you should be able to express that in some way or form. You should be able to find a way to be yourself and to invite and encourage these things in yourself. And when other people express these traits, even if they are not you, even if you don't like that in yourself, 
you should be more accepting of that. You should be more accepting of femininity and of masculinity. I always say to intuitives, it's so important to get over sensor bias. It's so important to get over a bias that thinking is better than feeling or vice versa. It's not necessary to become a feeler if you're a thinker. It's not important to become a sensor if you're an intuitive, but it's important to acknowledge and respect the values that these types represent and to accept and to find a peace with being around people like that. And to do that, we have to learn to raise our view of femininity and masculinity to hold men and women in high regard if we hold them in currently in low regard, to accept that men can possess feminine traits and that women can possess masculine traits and to allow and encourage them to be themselves, to express themselves and to learn not to see uh, women who are masculine in a negative way and to not see men who are feminine in a negative regard. And that's the key struggle for a lot of INFPs and ENFPs men that I've met out there. And to some extent that is a struggle for me as an INFJ man. Now after watching this video I have a challenge for you. If you're a YouTuber, if your name is Eric and you're a host of Talking With Famous People, if you are The Roar Within, if you are a person like Denzel Mensa, yes, if your name is Megan Levoten, you're an ENFJ or another YouTuber making your own videos or getting started on YouTube, if you are Basement Overlord or anyone else out there who's happening to be listening, I want to see your video about being your personality type and having your gender and what misassumptions people tend to have about you and who you are and what people tend to think about you just because you're a man or just because you're a woman. So hopefully this will cause some good debate and discussion and hopefully it will cause some introspection about who you are and how people see you and how you want to be seen and who you want to be. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you guys in the next video.